Is this a school project thing? Uh, I guess so. Kind of. All right, let's begin. Welcome, everybody. So this is one of my new series, a kind of a a newer one that we're trying to figure out that I need to bring in more educational stuff. Um, so my gunslinger needs a rebuild. And I've been uh, thinking about, you know, the Peacemaker 3 changes. There's time to hunt. You know, Lust Boy has been talking about time to hunt. So in the past few days, I was talking to Lust Boy. I learned a lot of stuff about TTH. I don't play TTH at all. And at the same time, I basically have a wrong build. Whereas I have too much swiftness. Uh, so I don't do as much damage. And it feels that you just add the swiftness in order for you to be more versatile in the fight so you get swiftness for comfiness uh, and since it's not the highest ceiling uh, i wanted to just respec it when the engraving it changes and stuff so this particular video is going to uh, at the end uh i'm going to make my decision i already made my decision on what i'm going to do and we will also cover the topic of multiple builds that exist within gunslinger people who are wondering should i go tta should i go pm those topics are the major stuff that we're going to talk about okay and the slideshows do help me because when we do it live with you guys with chat uh we do get off a tangent so this is just to help me keep on topic and i'm going i'm probably going to use this on the rest of the uh, newer videos for different classes in the future okay so let's get to it quickly so the major differences let's start with the major differences between peacemaker and time to hunt because this is where you should talk about first uh so peacemaker obviously she has an extra stance so she has more skills to use so she has the shotgun which is equals more damage when dps window is longer because they have more skills for them to utilize right tth is technically lower dps than regular pm because they have less skills right but they can perform better with shorter DPS windows, which is usually the case, like most of the times. Uh, we're going to go over this in detail in a bit. But since the damage rotation skill sets are more compact, it's just uh, TTH removes the shotgun. Shotgun tends to have a very long animation. So it's pretty hard to squeeze in the DPS. We're going to go talk into more detail about that after. So TTH also allows you to land reliable crit while having a high amount of spec. So you can actually go spec crit or spec swift with hallucination uh, and high spec tends to increase a lot of damage as you guys may know uh, a lot of spec characters you know we have striker uh, we have death blade those kind of high spec characters the higher it gets the the more scaling you get right uh, pm scaling for spec is not that great as for shotgun but for rifle it's great so tth kind of condenses her Ability to increase the damage into rifles only. So that's that's the uh, the advantageous position that this particular build has. So Peacemaker, though, they do have a higher ceiling because they just have more skills. It just doesn't make sense. Like if you do less skills with more, if you do if you do less damage with more skills, that doesn't make sense, right? So assuming you compare into like let's say assuming you compare 6m to 6m, this, what 6m is basically you master six skills, or, and then 7m is you master seven skills. Uh, the PM has more utility because she has a shotgun uh, and shotguns have more stagger and more weak point that kind of stuff so those are the major differences between those two <clears throat> we're going to cover them more on detail now uh, Peacemaker has a lot of problem uh, but recently the patch uh, maybe it band-aid a little bit but usually too much swiftness you do no damage causing boundless MP phase if you're using nightmare so boundless MP is really bad for gunslinger because you have so many skills for you to rotate and if skills are off cooldown right and if it's play if if your skills playing around that means you're losing dps for opportunity with parsing and stuff so if you have too much swiftness you just do no damage because you know you don't have the scaling you don't crit as much right and uh your your your, cool, your skills are just playing around so too much of this is bad if you have too much crit you over crit with shotgun so a long time ago the problem with peacemaker was it increases crit crit rate for shotguns, right? But now it's flat 10%. Therefore, 
uh, with the flat 10%, it increases damage, as in it gives us 15% damage when it's level th 3. Before that patch, if you have too much crit, <coughs> you're basically wasting that percentage uh, so you, to uh, reliably put it on somewhere else. So, for example, if you have like 1500 crit rate, the problem is if you're over 100%, you're missing 200 combat stats just, just out of nowhere because you try to make your rifle uh, crit rate much higher, but that crit rate on the shotgun <coughs> makes it harder to do so. Uh, too much spec, you do a lot of damage on the rifle, but white numbers hurt also so much. And the shotgun scaling for spec is actually not that great. So those are some of the hard stuff about Peacemaker that most of you guys already know. They're just smudge in some way because combat stats are so hard to balance uh, for Peacemaker. You can't make like a, uh, for example, let's say a Shadow Hunter. You focus that spec to increase your build. But for Peacemaker, let's say you try to increase crit, your shotgun's over critting, and your rifle's critting decently. If you take down the shotgun crit rate, your rifle goes down as well, so you see hella white numbers, so you go very smudge, right? And if and if you increase spec, it doesn't imp impact the shotgun and stuff. So afterwards, after the patch, it got a lot better, and which we we're going to talk about the build afterwards. Now let's talk about some of the good stuff. So what's good about Peacemaker, right? Without time to hunt, right? Uh, so we have good throwaway skills, but like less situational stuff. For example, let's say if boss has 100 lines, the execution damage starts around 50, right? So if you have great DPS window at 50, so when I say great DPS window, it is something uh, the boss is stunned or the boss is after a major gimmick, so, so uh, he gets stunned a lot, right? Those are great DPS windows where you can land all your skills very easily. Or maybe great DPS windows, you're going to have like three bubbles on and stuff. You might want to save your rifle skills because your execution damage bonus starts after 50, right? For a, a boss that is 100 lines. <clears throat> but... Let's say the boss hypothetically has 51 to 54 lines. Uh, let's say you're playing TTH. If your major DPS skills is a rifle, you have to put that number down and then use the rifle skill. If you use the rifle skill at like 51 or 54 bars, you don't get that additional damage bonus, right? So it's kind of smudge in that way. But for Peacemaker, for Peacemaker, you can use the shotgun to drop that 51 to 54 to 49 along with your teammates hitting you, right? And then use the rifle to actually make the damage uh, scaling more efficient, as in you want that execution damage percentage to be impacting your rifle so that you use your rifle at the right time. So these are, so I call this like the throwaway skills like shotguns to get this HP down for bonus rifle damage, right? Uh, and the second point is better stagger contribution because shotgun has a decent stagger, right? And, and shotgun also has weak point too. Right. Also, being able to use awakening on a shotgun stance is a big plus too. Because if you use a shotgun, it gives you additional crit. Right. Uh, it impacts your uh, it impacts your awakening. However, TTH's crit chance does not impact the awakening. So when you see a high level time to hunt gunslingers uh, use their awakening, like the high noon stuff or the other one, you see a lot of white numbers. Is because the engraving itself does not impact the awakening crit rate. So it's kind of smudged on, on that part of uh, section. But if you play Peacemaker, you, you switch to Shotgun Stance and have that additional 10% crit on top of what you have to hopefully crit with your Awakening. Yep. So, and the fourth one is Peacemaker has higher DPS and Burst when you're allowed to hit the boss long enough. You notice people who are playing Gunslingers, their animation is very long. As in their shotguns, uh, their sharpshooter is very long, buckshot is very long, your shotgun rapid fire is very long, right? Target down is very long, focus shots very long. They're all very long. Uh, it's longer compared to like let's say uh, other shorter classes, right? So, but when you hit all of them uh, with you know uh, on every cooldown, uh, your DPS has to be higher because you just have more skills to land, right? Now let's go to the next topic. Again, what makes Peacemaker so difficult? We just talked about it. You need to hit your third and fourth shot of the focus shot and target down because the focus shot is uh, conditional, as in you have to hit the third hit if I show you the skill here. So these are, these are super simple stuff, right? These are basic things. The tripod, the tripod 
a lot, uh, is making you you have to use that this particular tripod where if it lands the third hit, uh, the fourth hit does additional damage. So if you notice here, this particular double tap, you know, if you happen to land your third hit, your fourth hit does additional damage, right? Very simple. So you need to hit the third hit, uh, third and fourth hit in order for you to do damage. That's why sometimes most of the players, including myself, are using this particular tripod change of direction, right? Some people use the fast, uh, like the fast aim because it's just faster. But the thing is, you, since you can like aim and turn it around, the goal is to just hit the third hit and then have the last hit, uh, make sure the last hit and the, and the third hit hits, right? And this is the same case for target down, but target down is one of the easiest skills to actually land. Uh, so you can pass that one. Also, it's difficult because you need to hit all seven attacks of your sharpshooter in order to proc the tripod, right? And this is a long animation. So, for example, let's say you are doing your sharpshooter. This is like you're 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 staying still for like a like a good two seconds, right? Right? And you will need to hit all of these hits in order for the particular tripod that gives you the big bonus damage at the very end to proc, right? Because it uh because it stacks up to seven times and then per stack based on the stack uh, the last damage is increased that's how it usually works so you have to hit all seven attacks of sharpshooter so it's also conditional so most of the skills that peacemaker has is all conditional right focus shot target down sharpshooter lock in position quite a long time too so basically zero swiftness is what most people do now with low mobility skills uh if you want to do damage like you, you would be very slow and very smudge. But if you want to give a little bit on swiftness, uh, your damage decreases. So it's just smudge in some way, right? So going to the next topic, you can. This is the the worst problem for this actually for gunslinger. So you can still parse poorly. Uh, as in gunslinger will parse poorly even if you played nearly perfect, right? Because if you're not critting because of RNG shit. Uh, and since you're over creating, you have to turn the crit down, right? So let's say your rifle, you land it 100% of the time uh, with every cooldown. But imagine, like, you see so many white numbers. So if you just have bad RNG, you're just not, uh, you won't be able to do good parses. There are so many conditional stuff for you to, that is required for you to play perfectly. Now, next topic. What makes TTA superior? It works well with shorter DPS windows because skill sets are more compact, as in... You guys know Agile Fin is 9 second window, right? Third bubble is 15 to 16 seconds. So within 16, 15 to 16 seconds plus, or let's say Agile Fin of 9 seconds, how many skills do you think you can fit in uh, within that 9 seconds? TTH, you can fit every single skill in. However, Peacemaker, I don't know if you can, uh, but let's say if you also add in the Shotgun Rapid Fire, right? And then you also add the Buckshot. And you also add in the sharpshooter. You also add in the target down. You also add in the focus shot. And then you have the perfect shot. And then you have your catastrophe, right? So the important thing is for Peacemaker, the goal is to, you know, the goal is to land your sharpshooter, right? Land your dual buck shot. And then land your focus shot and then land your target down, right? The order doesn't really matter. And the reason why <clears throat> the reason why these four skills are the most important is because they just do the most damage. So you have uh, you have the tier one first, just focus shot and the sharpshooter, and then the tier two, you have the target down and then dual box shot, right? However, for TTH though, it's even more compact than that because you're, you're only using the rifles, these four rifles only. So at a very specific situation, let's say the uh, the boss is stunned, right? So let's just go, let's go if I can find uh, a good example that we have also wrote down on the. So let's say you know you do the you do the quick time event, right? So she's stunned in the middle, like this, right? And by the time she actually gets up, and then flies away. How much time do you guys actually have, right? And can you can you actually land all your skills? So let's just so let's just check this out. So it's at fifty three seconds. Uh, she flew away. So you have up to about I mean sorry. So eighteen seconds. So you have up to about like when the cutscene's done. Um, 
you have from 15, 15 seconds, and then you have to go there, right? And then 15 seconds from 15 seconds, when does she fly away? She flies away at around 25. So you have about 10 seconds. <clears throat> uh, you have about 10 seconds to put in all the DPS skills in to make it, you know, efficient, right? Obviously, because she's just standing there. Uh, and since TTH, you only have four skills, right? Since you only have four skills, uh, it is much easier to do a compact and then do your job because afterwards, oh, let's say, oh, what well, TTH has a higher cooldown, etc., right? Let's say you're a consistent DPS. You're supposed to do consistent DPS for a longer time to catch up to burst DPSers because burst DPSers just do higher numbers. But the thing is, you're stuck in a cutscene, as in like you're stuck in a pattern where she just flies away, so you can't attack her anyways, right? That's why some of the consistent damagers uh, tend to have like less DPS because they just need to hit more, because they, they just need to hit more. It's, it's very, this stuff is very basic, uh, and I'm pretty sure most of you guys know why burst classes are tend to be a little bit better, because not only the fact that the Adro Fins 9 seconds, the Bar Bubble is 15, 16 seconds, this uh, the the raid mechanics in this particular game, uh, even at Broshaza, more at Akan, there are DRs as in damage reduction, and there are cutscenes, and there are uh, very small windows. They give you very small windows of opportunity to land the damage in, and if it's easier for you to condense your animation or condense your skills to land all the kit that you can have, they tend to perform a lot better. That's how it usually works because. Uh, and it's also why uh, the Trixian is not that great of an example of DPSs because the Trixian bot is just there the whole time. It's just a scarecrow, right? Uh, you have to calculate the time windows where they fly away. You have to calculate the time windows on uh, the cutscene happening, etc. All that stuff. So we don't need to talk too much about it, but I'm pretty sure you guys most know uh, why TTH is superior in this way because. If you put into calculation of cutscene, the number of uh, uh, opportunities that you get during a raid, they tend to scale a lot better because it is easier to do more DPS uh, with a given time, right? So, but let's let's go to the, we're not really talking about the superior of TTH every time. There's also a downside of TTH as well, right? TTH is a very poor weak point contribution, as in uh, the only weak point that they really have is your perfect shot, right? And then you have your catastrophe, right? However, the reason why it's bad is because you're using these four skills to rotate DPS. So it will be on cooldown most of the time. So it's not so bad if you have everything up, but you, prob you probably won't have them ready for you, right? Because you're focusing on uh, the rifle shot, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The focus also have it, but the thing is, I'm pretty sure if you have the, the the problem is if your focus shot is on not on cooldown, you're doing something wrong. Unless you're in like a cutscene or something, because you're supposed to keep rotating these skills to have a perfect parse or have a, a, a like a great like you know have good DPS going because those are your main skills. And uh, since those will be on cooldown most of the time, let's say you're doing like a, a, a gimmick where it requires weak point. Uh, they will be having, they will be on cooldown, and they will, therefore you won't be able to contribute uh, weak points. But Peacemaker, what they can do, they have shotguns as well, so they kind of they can swap the shotgun, or they can swap back, etc., to deal uh, enough weak point uh, to the raid boss or you know the guardian. And number two, stagger is even worse; it's almost non-existent. As in, uh, so I talked to Lost Boy about it a lot, right? And then he and he's he helped me write all these notes. Like Meteor Stream, Catastrophe does stagger too. But again, Catastrophe is going to be on cooldown most of the time because you're using this for damage, right? So the only real true stagger skill that you have is Meteor Stream. So the stagger contribution is also really bad. And this is, and also another case is one less engraving for Awakening. As in, TTH doesn't work on Awakening. To clarify again, you just have less, en less engraving for Awakening. Uh, you can't create as much compared to Peacemaker. <clears throat> now, fourth one is actually a really big one. A big problem for me, actually. Uh, price can be more expensive because of specialization. So price of spec accessories are much higher uh, than crit or swift accessories because let me show you this. So this is based on, it's based on your market as well, uh, but just for Korea market for like a, a comparison standpoint, this is grudge. 
this is Grudge Hitmaster for crit accessories, right? So if I search it up, uh, it goes to it goes to like you know the high quality stuff goes to like 50k, 75k, etc. Right? But if I go spec, it goes from 189 to like 190, 180, that kind of stuff. This is because spec accessories are much more expensive in general. Uh, you know, like sorcerer uh, spec accessories are expensive. Crit accessories are much, much, much cheaper. So for TTH though, for the about the same performance with big numbers, uh, with condensed big numbers, you just pay that much more money for, let's say, about the same playstyle. I mean, the, the same result, as in you just have a change of different playstyle, and then you just have condensed playstyle, it's much easier, etc. Yep. Also, throwaway skills. So we talked about throwaway skills, right? Again, with another example, if boss has 100 lines, if execution damage starts at 50, uh, the sub-damage handgun skills is not enough to drop from 54 to 50, uh, 50, so you probably have to wait a little bit and get the buff and then have the execution damage Im applied into it so to do that much more additional damage, right? So you can't, you can't kind of efficiently rely on rotating skills because you don't really have a throwaway DPS skills like a Peacemaker that has shotguns. Uh, next topic, what is 6M or 7M? Uh, I like how I like how Lust Boy said it this way. It says he has no clue. I, I actually have no clue who came uh, came up with this either. Uh, but I mean, the term makes sense. You master six or you master seven damage skills, right? If you go six M, you use six damage gems, or uh, which is the uh, level eleven or higher, right? For skill level, if you use seven M, you use seven damage gems, and then you just have a, a higher level damage skills on that particular thing. So if you have uh, obviously having seven damage gem is stronger than having six damage gems. So it's, it's super simple stuff. Going into the skill set choices. So assuming you're like a pe uh, peacemaker, you need focus shot, target down, sharpshooter, and dual buckshot, right? TTH is obvious. It's not worth mentioning, for example, perfect focus, target, and cat uh, cat catastrophe, right? Because uh, you, you have four rifle skills with the, the highest DPS. And since you have four of them, you have to choose two or three side DPS skills to choose between. So you have bullet rain, you have catastrophe, you have shotgun rapid fire, and perfect shot, right? Technically, last request is also an option, but last request is more um, uh, aimed towards gimmicks and stuff, and it's also head and back attack, so it doesn't really, it doesn't get the help of Hitmaster at all. Gunslinger is a Hitmaster class, and Gunslinger has a shotgun tripod where it turns your shotgun skills into, into a Hitmaster skill instead of uh, header back attack. Let's talk about Bullet Rain. The Bullet Rain got popular because it got uh, it does good DPS, and it ha but it requires too much attention. As in, since it has fast cooldown, you gotta keep rotating this Bullet Rain, right? You're, you're rotating this Bullet Rain like this, right? And then you're looking at it, you're all this stuff. And when this comes back, you have to like squeeze it in so that you do the most DPS, right? And you have to land all of this too. You have to land all this stuff, and sometimes you swap, you do it a little bit earlier, and then you use your rifle skill. That means you lose that much more DPS in that particular parse, right? Issue about this bullet rain is you see this adrenaline stack? The adrenaline stack resets after you're done with bullet rain. So imagine your adrenaline stack is at three, like three seconds left, and then you're using your bullet rain, your adrenaline runs out. So that's smoke. So we have some of these smoke stuff, conditional stuff that just makes bullet rain. A little bit iffy, but people still use it because it just does decent damage. Uh, so uh, for someone that is really focusing towards, like I want the most damage possible that you can just go, like the highest ceiling possible, I want the most damage. Uh, I don't care about the smoke, I can I can take care of my cooldowns really good, and I'm just going to play really well for it. Bullet Rain is a good choice. And Catastrophe is also used really well after the change because this is a very quick skill. Look at that. It's like a very quick skill and you can just use it really quickly. With the execution phase as well, you get that bonus damage because this is a rifle skill. Uh, and the newer skill that got a little popular is the shotgun rapid fire, right? People hate this skill. However, shotgun rapid fire has a long cooldown uh, based on the damage. Therefore, it doesn't require as, as much attention as rain of bullet. Right, it doesn't require much attention. You can't, you know, you gotta be like hitting this here. But what if you just land your shotgun rapid fire, which is like thirty seconds? Uh, the only, the only thing that you need to watch out for is like, let's say you're doing a shotgun rapid, you just save your space bar just in case, right? So people are using shotgun rapid fire a little bit more because let's say you rotate your major skills, you have nothing else to do. 
let's say you land your shotgun rapid fire, you're completely done. And then you're walking around, and then by the time you walk around a little bit, your skills come back. Your major skills, your focus shot, your target down, and your sharpshooter and dual buckshot comes out. It's important to think about how much attention does a, a specific skill need. Bullet may require so much more skill, I mean, uh, so much more attention, but it will do so much more damage. Shotgun rapid fire uh, requires much less attention because it's longer, but it, l it does a little bit less. So the skill choice is based on uh, how you want to do it. So for example, if you're crit spec 6M, it'd be wise to go, you know, uh, bullet rain and catastrophe, right? Or bullet rain, perfect shot, or bullet, bullet rain, catastrophe, perfect shot do most damage in like 7M settings, but you can switch bullet rain with shotgun rapid fire if you're struggling with rotating skills. It's not, it's not that much of a loss. So you do so much, you are so much more chill, uh, but you do, it's not a significant difference between a DPS thing. So this is more of a preference space. Yep. So uh, that was a lot of chat and that was the basic chat. I thought about it and now, uh what am i going for it so i'm the build that i'm choosing uh from me thinking about is i'm going for the 7m crit spec peacemaker uh and the reason why is because if i did not carve a 97 stone yesterday uh, i would have went for tth i would have went tth but i carved a 97 stone so i can go 7m pm uh, 7 MPM crit spec because I can have level 2 adrenaline. I can actually have level 2 adrenaline TTH as well for a huge amount of damage. So I was going to play like a, a fun build where I can have level 3 time to hunt and level 3 peacemaker for the fun and then uh, have level 1 uh, adrenaline right for that 5% crit uh, for a spec crit build. Like uh, the weakness exposure, I just want that big number for no reason. So I was going to play a fun build like that but after I carved a 9-7 stone, I want to play the absolute highest ceiling, even though I'm going to be bad at it. So I think it's going to be really fun. So uh, with that being said, this concludes the short talk about the Gunslinger rebuilding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look into uh, the market and then probably uh, buy accessory because I, I bought, um, bought a lot of gold. So 